today we're going to be taking a look at this Aloe Rare Sentinel HD55 dehumidifier. Now the reason I decided to go with the Sentinel is that it should be a little bit better and last a little bit longer than these big box residential units that seem to fail every one to two years. This is my third one in six years. So the Sentinel has a five-year warranty whereas everything I found at the big box stores only have a one-year warranty now. So I decided to step it up a notch and I went to Amazon and bought the Sentinel there. So the Sentinel does cost about double what an equivalent residential unit would cost from one of the big box stores. But this thing seems like it's built quite a bit better and it has a higher capacity and uses almost half the energy that one of these does. So over the long run, I'm hoping it's going to be cheaper to own this than replacing one of these every couple of years. Before I get started, I want to let you guys know that this video is just for reference and is not intended to take the place of the product documentation or owner's manual. Before I do an overview, I thought I'd come over to the website and take a look at the spec sheet to point out a few of the features that were important to my decision in selecting this machine. The first item that was important to me was the power. You can see that it runs on 115 volts 60 hertz, which is standard for USA. Next up, current draw is 4.1 amps. I think the old residential unit that I was using drew 7.5 amps, so this should be an improvement on my power bill. Now down here, the filter that this uses is a MERV-8 filter. That wasn't so important to me because this is going to be running in my cellar, but this may be something that's important to you if you're worried about air quality. The next item that I looked at was the sound level. This one is rated at less than 52 decibels. Now that isn't terribly loud, but what I have noticed after using this for a few days is that it is louder than my old unit. So if you're going to be using this in the living space, that may be something to consider. Next up is the drain. I wanted to make sure that I got a unit with a continuous drain, which this one has, but it does not have a pump. So you're going to need to mount the unit above wherever the drain exits your house. A feature I really liked about this machine is that it is auto defrosting. If it senses that the evaporator coils are frosting up, it will go into its own defrost mode and take care of that. If we take a look at the capacity, you can see here that it's rated at 55 pints per day at 80 degrees Fahrenheit, 60% relative humidity. Now in the advertising that you'll see online for this unit, it's also advertised for 130 pints per day, but I believe that's at a higher temperature and humidity rating. The official measurement is 55 pints, which is on par, maybe a little bit better than most of the residential units available at a big box store. A couple of other items worth mentioning are the rare earth alloy tube evaporator. All this means is that the evaporator should resist corrosion a little bit better than a residential unit that is made with maybe lesser quality materials. There is a protection in the unit in case the water backs up inside, it will shut off, which is a good feature to have in case the drain gets plugged or stops working for some reason. This unit can also be controlled by a remote control similar to a thermostat on a furnace. Now that's not something that I'm going to do with mine, but that may be something that is important to you. And in fact, if you're considering a unit like this, I suggest studying this spec sheet and some of the other documentation on the website to determine if this unit is right for you. Taking a closer look at the machine, the first thing I'll point out is that this one is set up to run on standard 120 volt with a standard North American plug. Now up here in the top right is the control panel and we'll take a closer look at that in a minute. The terminal strip on the lower right is used for connecting up an optional external condensation pump. The port below the terminal strip that looks like an RJ45 network connection is actually used for connecting an external control panel the remote control would act kind of like a thermostat for a furnace. And this would allow you to mount the dehumidifier in say like a laundry room or even a basement, but control the humidity in another room like a living room or a dining room. And that way you don't actually have to hear the dehumidifier running or have it taking up space in the room that you want to control. Now, unlike the residential units, this unit can be serviced. You can see that the front panel has two screws, a latch and some hinges so it can be opened up and serviced if needed. So the case on this unit is made entirely of sheet metal 
And there are some carry handles on top so you can lift it up and move it around if you need to. And on the bottom there are metal adjustable feet so that you can level this thing out if needed. So over here on the side of the unit is the exhaust port where the dried air comes out. Now in case you want to add duct work and direct the exhausted air someplace, there is a duct adapter included that can be easily clipped onto the side and then a duct can be installed here and routed wherever it needs to go. The intake filter is on the back of the unit and it can be easily slid out and cleaned as needed. And you can see while I've got the filter slid out, the condenser material in here is coated to prevent corrosion. Now this unit does not have a built-in tank to collect water, but there is a drain port right here and an included hose to route the drain water where you need it to go. And I'll also mention that this is a gravity drain unit. There's no internal pump to deal with the water. So that means the unit is going to have to be mounted a little bit above wherever the drain water needs to be routed to. So this unit works a lot like a typical residential unit does. The control panel here has a few soft touch buttons, the first one over here being the power button. You can see when I turn it on, the unit beeps and starts to run. To set the humidity level that the machine will trigger on, I can use the up and down arrows. You can see right now it's set to 50. It'll blink a few times and then it'll go back to telling us what the current humidity level is which in this case is 86. Now in typical operation, the machine will run until the humidity is lowered to whatever the set point is, and then it'll shut off. However, the machine can actually be run in continuous mode, meaning it won't shut off, if you set the humidity down to its lowest point. You can see it says CO there, that means continuous operation. Once the machine is turned off, the fan will run for a minute or two, and then everything will shut down completely. There are several indicator lights on the control panel. When the power light is green, that indicates that the unit is on and ready to go. When the defrost light is lit green, that indicates that the dehumidifier is in continuous operation mode. When the indicator is red, that means that the dehumidifier is in defrost mode and defrosting the evaporator coils. If the compressor light is red, that means that the compressor is warming up and getting ready to start. When it switches to green, that means that the compressor is running in normal operation mode. If you want to learn more about this dehumidifier, check the links in the description below. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.